Welcome to Sustainable Health Empowerment Health Education Series. My name is Moza Hamoud, and I am a fourth year medical student at St. George's University School of Medicine. It's my honor to be here today for the telecast in the third of our series on breast cancer, which is the most common cancer in women in the United States and globally, aside from skin cancers. Today, we will focus on detection and treatments, including a review of the technique of breast self-examinations. So let's jump right in. Our objective for this episode are to, number one, recognize the sign and symptoms of breast cancer. Number two, understand the steps in breast self-examinations. And number three, identify diagnostic tools used to screen for breast cancer. Let's first look at the signs and symptoms of breast cancer. People usually don't have symptoms in the early stages of breast cancer, but as the tumor grows, it can change the way the breast looks or feels. These are some of the common changes in a breast that is affected by cancer. A lump or thickening in the breast or under the arm. A change in the shape and size of the breast. Dimpling or puckering in the skin of the breast. A person may see a nipple turned inward, such as in this picture clear or bloody discharge from the nipple, scaly, red, or swollen skin on the breast, nipple, or areola, which is the dark area of the skin around the nipple. The skin may have ridges or pitting, kind of like the skin of an orange. During your annual exam, your healthcare provider will perform a clinical breast examination. Your provider will look for changes in the size or shape of your breast, for rushes, dimpling, or other changes, and they may squeeze your nipple to check for discharge. They will also check both sides for lumps in your breast, around your neck, on your collarbone, or your underarms. Lumps are very hard to feel as they begin as the size of a pea. If they feel a lump, they will determine its size, its shape and texture and see if it moves easily. Benign or cancerous lumps are often smooth, round and movable. A hard, or oddly shaped lump that is firmly attached to one area is more likely to be cancerous. Further tests will be needed for a diagnosis. Though self-exam should not replace a clinical exam, many women who have regularly performed breast self-exams have detected lumps early leading to earlier treatment. Let's look at the steps. Breast self-examination. Number one, you would want to lie flat on your back and place your left arm over your head with a pillow or towel under your left shoulder. When laying down, the breast tissue spreads evenly over the chest wall and is as thin as possible, making it much easier to fill all the breast tissue. So use the finger pads and not the tips of your right hand to move in a circular motion to fill the breast tissue covering the entire breast area and armpits. Use light, medium and firm pressure. Repeat the exam on your right breast, putting your right arm over your head and using the finger pads of your left hand 
to do the examination. Step two, gently squeeze the nipple, check for discharge and lumps. Let's move on to step number three. While standing in front of a mirror, visually examine your breast with your hands on your side, with your hands raised above your head, and finally, with your hands pressing firmly down on your hips. Look at your breasts for any changes of size, shape, contour, or dimpling, or even redness or scaliness of the nipple or the breast skin. Step number four. When taking a shower, examine your breast using the pads and not the tips of your fingers and move around your entire breast in a circular pattern, moving from the outside to the center, checking the entire breast and armpit area, raising one arm, then the other, so you can check under your arm for lumps. All right, now let's review what we have learned. The first question is, which of the following may be symptoms of breast cancer? A nipple turned inward into the breast, scaly, red, or swollen skin, bloody fluid from the nipple, or hair growing on the breast. Please keep in mind that multiple answer choices may be correct. So if you selected a nipple turned inward into the breast, scaly red or swollen skin, bloody fluid from the nipple, you will be correct. Moving on to the next question. Is it true or false? Lumps that are soft, smooth, round, and movable are likely to be cancerous. And if you said false, you are correct. Moving on to the next part of our presentation, mammograms. Most of you have probably had a mammogram, but let's review what it can reveal and when you should get them. A mammogram is an x-ray of the tissue inside the breast. Mammograms can often show a lump before they are felt. They also can show specks of calcium called microcalcifications. If these are seen, further tests are needed for diagnosis. Women younger than 40 who are at risk for breast cancer should check with their healthcare provider to determine how often they should have a mammogram. Women over 40, on the other hand, should have one every year, preferably. Your healthcare provider may also order an ultrasound or MRI. An ultrasound can detect the difference between a fluid-filled cyst and a lump. An MRI takes more detailed pictures of breast tissue to distinguish between healthy and diseased tissue. The only way to know for sure if cancer is present is through a biopsy, which is a removal of tissue to check for cancer, which is often done by a surgeon and often using a needle. The biopsy may be of the skin around the breast, or more commonly, tissue is removed from the breast, which is taking part or all of the lump, the tissue is then sent to a pathologist who examines the tissue or fluid for cancer cells and identifies the type of cancer. Today we learned symptoms of breast cancer and how breast cancer is diagnosed. Next week we will conclude this series with a discussion of types of breast cancer, staging, treatment of breast cancer, and more. 
Remember to schedule regular checkups in addition to breast self-examinations. Thank you for tuning in and be sure to check out our next episode and all the episodes in this health series. We'll see you next week and here's to good health and good habits.